Once again, thanks a lot for inviting me. I have a few questions that I'd like to touch on. And in touching on those questions, maybe guide you and guide ourselves to, to these works here. I think the first question is why at 40? Misha has just turned 40. And uh, why is Misha having his first exhibition as a sculptor uh, at the age of 40? Now, if one looks back at what sculpture is and what Misha has been doing for his whole life, sculpture is essentially expressing yourself in three dimensions. And uh, as you all know, or as many of you know, Misha is a jeweler. And uh, if you look at Misha's jewelry, these are essentially sculptures, small sculptures that you can carry around on you or drape around your neck or put on your finger. So this, I don't see this as, as, as something new. I see this as a continuation uh, and a logical development of the work that Misha has been doing all his life. Um, slightly bigger and I think hard to wear around your neck. But um, in terms of the principle of transforming objects into a three-dimensional space and being creative in doing so, uh, this is, for me, just a continuation of his, of his work. If you look at these things very carefully, you'll see the jeweler in, in, at work here. You'll see the extreme handicraft, the attention to detail, the interfaces which fit perfectly. Now, as we know, jewellery in the, in the past was a way for us to carry our wealth around with us. Jewellery has changed. Hemmler, the um, jeweller in München, close to where Misha was trained, today has their works, their sculptural works, all over the world museums as little bits of sculpture. And you no longer have gold and platinum and diamonds over there. Emmeler is now working in aluminium and wood and selling these pieces of jewellery for uh, not their intrinsic gold or diamond worth, but selling it for sculptural work. So I think there is as well in the postmodern times this, this merge between uh, sculpture at different scales. So I think that answers the question why at 40 uh, is, is Misha here with uh, large pieces of jewellery? And why two doors down you have Sitali where there are small, exquisite sculptures. So I, I wanted to bridge that. Coming to the, to the title, Heritage Osmosis, I thought about this quite a lot. And um, the first thought, um, what does this mean? I'd like to address this at two levels. Firstly, in terms of Misha's personal biography. And then, secondly, in terms of these, what are essentially uh, objets trouvés in French sense, or found objects. And if we think of, of what it means, they're trophies. Misha was born in South Africa. He left at the age of seven and came back at the age of 26. And he shared with me this time when he was living in Germany uh, the longing for the space, the longing for the light, the longing for the color, the longing for the freedom of, of South Africa. And if we now come to the title Heritage Osmosis, these objects, for most of our untrained eyes, are rubbish or waste. But the, the trained eye, the receptive eye, the very different eye, has been, that, that Misha has, has allowed these objects to find themselves in a way fused into a new and a very valuable aesthetic space. <coughs> and listen to me here in terms of the osmosis. Again, these objects have very different heritages, but through that, that eye, which was trained again by Misha's experiences, these objects find themselves here. These objects, in a way, had a certain destiny, and through their creator, they found themselves here. So I think that we have to 
For us, when looking at these objects, we have to retrain our eyes as well and look at objects very differently. And I think with that, I want to 